All right, look at that. Uh, good morning, everybody. Who's, uh, who's ready to talk about scope three carbon emissions? All right. Um, so my name is uh, Robert Bunger. Uh, I work in the CTO office at Schneider Electric, and I'm uh, happy to spend a little bit of time talking about some work uh, that we've recently completed uh, around guidelines for accounting for scope three emissions in the data center, as well as giving you a preview of where scope three emissions or embodied carbon would fall in an example one megawatt data center. So, um, I believe that understanding scope three emissions is probably the, uh, the biggest sustainability challenge that data centers have right now. And uh, if you think about what we actually know about data centers, um, if, if I were to say, uh, you know, hey, I just uh, built a data center for $6 a watt or $6,000 a megawatt, uh, you'd probably say, hey, that's a, that's a pretty good price, right? A lot of us know, have a feel for what it costs to build a data center uh, 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 for the capacity of IT. If I were to tell you I operate a data center in Texas uh, and I have an annualized PUE of 1.2, uh, you'd probably say, hey, that's, that's pretty good. Now, if I were to say that I just built a data center facility, about to put IT equipment, and the embodied carbon of that data center is 3,500 metric tons of CO2. Is that, is that good or bad? We, I, if somebody knows here, I'd be super impressed. But that's what we need to, to get to, right? Um, we have to be able to answer the question, you know, is my scope two emissions bigger or smaller than my scope three emissions in my data center? Uh, you know, what is the scope three emissions of my data center? And, and of that, what's the biggest chunk? And um, so I, I believe that within the next couple of years that we'll get to a level of familiarity of scope three that we currently have with PUE and a lot of the other metrics that we do. So uh, to do a little bit of background, now I expect in this audience there's, uh, you know, we have a range of everything from beginner to expert of understanding all the different scopes of carbon. So this is a graphic from the uh, GHG protocol. And uh, you know, real quickly, scope one emissions is stuff that's emitted on site. And so for the data centers, a classic example of that is uh, the emissions from a diesel generator, right? Uh, scope two emissions is from purchased electricity. So that's what's happening at the power plant you know, with the local, local grid mix that you have. And then scope three is everything else. And you'll see that it's categorized two ways. There's upstream and then downstream. We'll mainly focus on upstream, but upstream is all the stuff that you get to build a data center, you know, the building and the materials, the IT equipment, the power and cooling equipment. Downstream would be any services you sell and their impact after it kind of leaves your facility. So if you sell stuff, you, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the data center. So this is a zoom in. So these 15 categories were depicted on the graphic just before. And uh, uh, so this, this is for any company out there. This is from the GHG protocol. And um, now if you take a, take a look at these things, we have to say, hey, what, which one of these things actually apply to data centers or just IT services in general? And uh, we've categorized IT services three ways. You know, people generally, if I were an enterprise, I probably have some cloud services. I might have some IT equipment hosted at a co-location facility. And I might have an on-premise data center that I operate myself. Right, and so the 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 question, you know, if you imagine a chief sustainability officer going to the CIO and going, "Hey, what's the carbon footprint of the IT services you provide our company?" Right? How would the CIO go about answering that question? And so that's what we're going to go through as a simple example. So these are nine categories with their associated subcategories that that we think. Uh, are most applicable to data centers. Um, and to walk through these categories, if, you know, for cloud services, this is kind of the easiest category for IT resources you could, you could do, right? You'd go right up there on category one. Uh, it's a purchase good and service. And so this would be a carbon footprint you'd be able to get from your 
cloud provider, your application provider, et cetera. The second category is the IT equipment that you host at a co-location facility. And this is a, a couple of things. First, you'd have to understand the embodied carbon of the IT equipment you've purchased and then placed in the co-location facility. And then you'd have to know, get the, uh, uh, you know, the leasing, the carbon from leasing space in a co-location facility. And there might be a, you know, kind of dotted line around, you might have to commute back and forth to that, and that would be a scope three also to go to that co-location to, to manage the IT equipment. And um, also note that depending on the contract that you have with the facility, uh, the electricity that you purchase may or may not be, it might be scope two, if it's bundled, it might be scope three, and, and that depends. Um, and then this last one, uh, you'll notice that this is downstream lease assets. So if I'm a co-location provider, my downstream carbon would be the input to my customers, right? And so it's an important point. Uh, so if you haven't looked at, you know, the first time I looked at the scope one, two, and three, you know, I'm like, there is a ton of overlap in this stuff, right? One, one person's uh, downstream scope three is another person's upstream scope three. And this is fully intended, right? This is the way they designed it. Uh, but note, a, a company as an entity does not overlap. So their carbon should be holistic and not overlap with anything else. But it's okay to overlap with other companies. Uh, now if you own and operate a data center, uh, you know, what do you take into account? And, and obviously that's gonna be you know, almost everything on this list, right? Building the building, the corn shell, all the power and cooling equipment, the IT equipment, any services that you have to operate and maintain it, uh, company vehicles, all that stuff. So it's a lot of things to account for. And um, uh, what uh, we're gonna go through next uh, is an example of a uh, one megawatt data center. So I'd you know, like to say what I've just covered here very briefly is, uh, is outlined in a white paper that, that we're just releasing. In fact, this is the first time we're talking about it, so it's white paper 53, and it goes through our recommendations on what we think should be categories specific for the data center industry with regards to scope three. And it's intended to just be a guide for people that are first taking that journey to try to understand you know, what should they account for and um, how it goes to scope three. Okay, so uh, we have done a preliminary analysis on what we think the scope three or embodied carbon is of a data center. And so since this is being recorded, uh, we have a huge disclaimer on this because it is initial data. But uh, the good thing is uh, the D GHG protocol on page 11 says that that is okay. Uh, they, they really want people to want, you know, measuring something is better than measuring nothing, and you only need the level of precision that allows you to start making decisions for improvement. And that's the thing, it's not a competition, but it's more about understanding where you are and making improvements. So, uh, and our analysis is ongoing, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So, so here's a, a bar graph uh, of a example data center. So the assumptions are up at the top. You can maybe read that. So it's a one megawatt data center. You know, nothing special about this data center. Air cooled package chillers, six kW, uh, six kW per rack density. Um, it's half full of IT equipment. It uses VRL batteries. Batteries are replaced every four years. IT equipment is refreshed every four years. So on the, on the left-hand side, you'll see the absolute value of scope one, two, and three. Scope two is the orange, and scope three is the red. And on the right side, you'll see it as a, as a uh, percentage. So you can see it, it, it kind of makes sense. And oh, what's the basis of the scope two? Uh, we just took the carbon mix uh, local grid of California, uh, latest data we had for that. So no PPAs or anything like that, local grid, California. So probably, Better than average, maybe great, except for maybe France or something like that, right? It'd look much different. So it, it goes as you'd expect. Right off the bat, you're gonna have a ton of scope three because you just made a data center. And then as time goes on, you'll see the scope two get bigger. But again, it all depends on where you are. 
Now, zooming in specifically to scope three, so we've stripped away scope one and two. Oh, one, I'm gonna go backwards. One other takeaway. Uh, where's the scope one, right? It's on there, <laughs> but it's very, very small. Like we said, scope one is like running your generators for testing and stuff. Uh, and uh, you know, it tends to be actually a very small part of the overall component. Okay, so embodied carbon. Uh, now we split it between IT equipment and then the facility, you know, the, the building and the MEP stuff. And you'll see that is, you know, you could look at your one and two, like 73% of the embodied carbon is the IT equipment. And there's two reasons for this. One, there's, there's just a lot of stuff. You kind of start thinking of stuff as mass. Um, you know, all the metal and stuff, there's just a lot of mass in the IT equipment uh, compared to the mechanical cooling in the building. And the second most important reason is that it's uh, refreshed every four years. So you're buying new equipment and adding more carbon, you know, embodied carbon to your data center. Now, since, uh, since I'm a Schneider guy, we'll zoom into the data center facility part of this. And here we break it out by the major subsystems. So core and shell, uh, electrical, ME systems, cooling systems, and then, and then other. So you can see that uh, you know, it's reasonably stable, which makes sense because you don't replace your electrical switch gear every other year, right? That lasts a long time. This stuff usually lasts a pretty long time. The blue bar grows, that's kind of, you know, that, that's other, other activities, business travel, commuting, maybe some services and stuff like that. And that'll just, obviously, that's a cumulative thing. Now, look, the scale is very, very long here. You know, our estimate is most data centers are gonna operate in the fifth, you know, 15 year range, but this chart does go out to 30 just, just to show an example. Now, zooming in one more layer. Oh, actually, one point. So, in my example at the beginning, I, uh, I said, hey, is a data center that I just built that's 3,500 metric tons of CO2 good or bad, right? According to our initial study, that we would say not so good. Here it's about 1,800 metric tons of CO2. So if I built a, a, a brand new facility right off the bat, you know, that's about what it is of, of carbon. Now, uh, time will tell how accurate our initial assessment is. And again, it's highly variable how you build your data center, the, the availability level, and all that other stuff. So uh, let's break down into the, uh, the subsystems. The, uh, for the building, uh, there's no surprise there. Most of the carbon is, uh, is gonna be in concrete. And, and we, did, you know, we didn't do anything special in this analysis, kind of standard practices uh, of building. So concrete has a lot of, you've probably heard a lot of things about green concrete and other ways to build stuff. On the power systems, uh, Sort of surprising, maybe not surprising, is the batteries, and these are just standard VRLA batteries, accounted for quite a bit. And, and again, they're real heavy, but they, um, they're replaced every, you know, every four years. And on the cooling system, uh, a little bit of surprise to me, maybe not to you guys, is that it, the pumps and the, and the piping and all that other stuff actually had a high, and, and I think we just used standard you know, steel piping and all that other stuff and looked it up. So, so that's kind of how, how we see things fall out. So this is the kind of picture that we want to get to. So as we're starting to design and build facilities and then operate them, we know what we should start going after first for improvements. Uh, so again, what I gave you is a preview of our analysis. Uh, in We're crossing our fingers November. We're going to complete uh, two things. One is a trade-off tool that you'll be able to do some sliders, change the size of your data center, maybe some high level design things and get a feel, an estimate of scope one, two and three carbon of your data center. Uh, we've had a, a, a scope two calculator for quite a while, uh, but now we're expanding it and adding the, adding the scope three. And uh, the, uh, it'll have an accompanying white paper that'll talk to the analysis and the assumptions and all that other stuff. So we're super excited for that to come out. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to kind of in summary, um, so actions for scope three improvement. Uh, the first thing is measure what you have. So white paper 53, again, we just released it today, is, uh, is, will help guide you on what categories to count and uh, where to put them to start accounting for scope three. So you don't know how to prove unless you know what it is. 
Uh, the second one is work with suppliers on getting that scope three data. So uh, the industry is pushing all suppliers to start making this data very, very available. And um, on the right is an example, um, a product environmental profile document, uh, you know, something that Schneider does, you know, and a life cycle assessments produce that. There's other types of forms of that, but that you're gonna start seeing in bid specs going forward. Um, also, just look for low carbon alternatives uh, for your data center. A classic example on the medium voltage switch gear is, uh, you know, SF6 is a high global warming potential gas, so go to air, air insulated switch gear. Uh, maybe use, reuse an existing building instead of building you. Look at things that get replaced often and see if you can get longer lead time stuff. So lithium ion batteries, when you look at the total carbon over the lifetime, it's close, but lithium actually starts to look better from a scope three perspective. You know, very close analysis on that. And then lastly uh, is the IT refresh. And we talked about circular economy right before this. And it's interesting, if you think about the uh, uh, OCP style of IT system at the rack level versus traditional. Um, traditional, when you replace a server, you're replacing the power supply and all this other stuff. With open compute, you have a, a, a platform, a rack and a power system that stays much longer than four years, and now you just replace the IT equipment. So that's a big help with regards to lowering your, your scope three emissions. So uh, last thing I'll say is uh, become involved in the sustainability uh, uh, work group. I, I think there's a lot of great work that OCP is definitely doing in this area. And I don't know if I have any time for questions. How'd I do? All right, two minutes. Yes. Um, have you considered using or comparing emission rates factors to lithium or VRLA? Yeah, so the question is have you compared uh, like nickel zinc to, to lithium and VRLA? Yeah, that totally in, in process. We, you know, we're starting to get the life cycle assessments on that. My guess is it will not be incorporated in that first trade off tool right off the bat, but absolutely, because there's going to be a bunch of chemistries, I think, coming out that are going to have a much better. Uh, scope three profile. So that's a very good point. Good to see you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Oh, right. Okay, so the question is about scope two, scope three, if I'm hosting on a power side. You know, I, I think this is going to be a question on, you know, how, what type of hosting are you? Retail, or are you doing wholesale leasing? And if you're paying the power bill, so if you have the agreement directly with the power company, you're purchasing electricity, it'll be, you know, your own scope too. Sometimes, probably for small deployments, maybe the power is all baked into the leasing agreement, and there it might, it might show up at scope three. And this is actually some stuff, we, we have a, on, on the back burner, another kind of analysis on if I'm a co-location co provider, how do I, you know, account for scope two and three? Uh, so work to be done there for sure to help there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and it is, you know, crazy stuff like scope three, like you think about running your diesel generators. Ah, that's, that's my scope one emissions on site. But well, when you purchase diesel, right, has to be refined, made, trucked to your site. So there's a scope three impact just by purchasing diesel fuel, right? It's not all scope two. Um, so there's a lot to it. Time, all right, thank you very much.